Welcome back to the channel and today I wanted to show you what you could expect from Qatar Airways business class on their 777-300ER in the non-Q Suites version. Yes, that's right, the non-Q Suites version. Please follow me on Instagram at BrandonJohnson10K for behind the scenes looks at content that I will be reviewing in the future. So here's a look at the old Qatar Airways business class in a 222 configuration. This is the mini cabin, so this is rows 5, 6, and 7. Um, the larger cabin consists of four rows up front. You would turn left if you were coming into the aircraft. So as you can see here, we've got the World Cup themed amenity kit. We've got that decorative pillow they always seem to have on long haul flights. You've got pajamas, which are also World Cup themed. I'll show you those. A nice thick blanket. And this pillow here, uh, which will be part of the bedding later. You've got the uh, Oryx One headphones, which are, those are fine. You got the menu out for food and um, drinks as well out there on the seat. You have the refreshing cooling towel and the pre-departure beverages uh, were offered. And you got a water there in this little cubby that kind of nice little um, secret cubby that you got there to hide your water, I guess. Luckily, there was nobody seated next to me. I mean, the mini cabin was fairly empty, so uh, that's that's a good thing there. So you can see the very sturdy tray table. Now you can push that up, but not enough to where you could get out of the seat if you had something on the tray table as well. So looking down to your left, you've got the headphone jack, USB port. Up front here, this is where you have your screen. Yeah, that's a unique design uh, quirk to this. Uh, it's not too high def of a screen. It is touch screen as well, but they do have the in-flight entertainment remote, which you'll see shortly. You do have individual air vents and access to one, two, three windows. I say really two. The first one you really can't look out of unless you've got a super long neck. And there are the seat controls there. Surprisingly enough, this actually was a one touch seat control. So you could lay flat with one touch which is impressive. I did, wasn't expecting that with the older seat. And you can also go back into the um, vertical position with just one touch there. That's how you put the, tr uh, the TV back down. So yeah, I was searching here for the outlet and that I'll show you in a minute. Really inconspicuous place. I thought it might've been behind here, but no, it's not. As you see the in-flight entertainment remote. But this is my one quirk about this uh, seat. Whoever designed this didn't think it through with the outlet. Yeah, this is the outlet next to your seat. Really hard to find and hard to get your uh, plug in there as well. So not a great design on that part. Really, that was the only negative thing I had to say about the flight at all. I'll, show, I'll let you know in my final thoughts. So let's take a look at the recline here. So you are in the bulkhead row. And you got the one touch reclines and that's that's a plus. So I found the sleeping uh, very comfortable on the flight here. This is QR774 from Sao Paulo to Doha. So we got 13 hours and 40 minutes of airtime there. They will put the mattress pad on the seat for you. Kind of make your bed a bit. And you can see here's the decorative pillow. A little closer look at that. As well as the nice blanket now it, that blanket can get hot yeah, it was hot at first in the cabin but things did cool off I did open the air vent so that did help so it wasn't as hot with those open uh, so here's a look at the pajamas of course I'll show you the bathroom in detail in a bit but there's the World Cup themed pajamas that they have so can add those to the collection very comfortable I do like Qatar Airways pajamas so, pretty stylish there and not too warm. The only downfall of those, they didn't have a pocket. The ones I've had before had a pocket, but these pants didn't have a pocket, unfortunately. So I'm gonna leave you with the takeoff and I'll be back shortly to talk about the rest of the flight.
look at the bathroom here on the triple seven. So bathroom is, is spacious and yeah, very easy to get changed into your pajamas in this bathroom. So no, no complaints there. Not too fancy. But here we've got the, I believe it's the Diptyque uh, sprays there, hand cream and soap as well. So that's the product they use in their amenity kits. There, as you can see, the rest of the bathroom, pretty standard stuff for the rest of it. Now, as far as meal service went, I'll let you take a look through the menu. As many of you know, Qatar is a dine on demand. Uh, concept and that's great so you can really set that up to have your food anytime you want it and that's that came in handy on this flight because this flight leaves San Paulo at 3 20 in the morning so that's an early time so many people want to sleep right away so you definitely have that option I'll leave you with the rest of the the menu and the drink menu and I'll be back shortly Okay, so the meal service, I started out with the orange juice and some warm nuts were brought out. So essentially the meal service started with breakfast uh, due to the time uh, this flight was leaving. So for starters here, you do make your table up. Of course, you've got warm bread there that comes with the salt, pepper, and the butter. And the nice mood lighting with the fox candle you've got there. Got some water and another one of those signature lime mint um, juices. So we've got a cold cut platter here with salmon, some vegetables, cheese, and meat. That was very good. I mean, the food was really good. And also I have here scrambled eggs with chicken sausage and tomato. Some kind of, I think, potato puff there. Again, really good food here. It didn't disappoint from since my last Qatar flight a couple years back. And I had a chamomile tea after that. So I'm going to skip right to lunch and dinner. Of course, we had to have time for some uh, champagne. Then in the mousse bouche was brought out. This is some kind of grilled shrimp with onion sauce. That was good. Had the grilled prawns with mango relish after that. Now those do have a little spice to it. So if you're sensitive to spice, you're going to want to watch that if you're ordering that. And for my main, I had the grilled filet steak marinated in chimichurri with plantains. And that, that steak was excellent. Plantains were good. Vegetables flavorful. So no complaints uh, right there.
And for dessert, I've got the pineapple and ginger tart. And that was very good as well. So again, the food was top notch on Qatar, just like I remembered a couple of years back. So a little bit before landing, they did give out some chocolate, some Swiss chocolate there. And there was a hot towel passed out also at the end of the, I guess, your personalized dining service. So here's the Wi-Fi option. So you can get an hour for free on the Super Wi-Fi, but $10 for the full flight is an absolute value. Yeah, I did purchase the Wi-Fi and for a 13 hour and 40 minute flight, that is an excellent value and it worked all the way through. So you can't really go wrong paying for it in this case, I think, and I'm not one who normally does. So I'm gonna leave you with the in-flight entertainment and I will be back shortly with my final thoughts. Okay, welcome back. So I want to give you my final thoughts on this flight. Uh, first of all, the service was outstanding. Uh, Maria, the flight attendant taking care of me, she was amazing. Uh, so I really want to give her a shout out to being phenomenal. She says it was her first time on this route, but you know, she did an excellent job. The seat is actually very comfortable to sleep in. Now, yes, it's not private, but again, yeah, if you don't have someone sitting right next to you, I mean, the seat is very similar to that of the Turkish Airlines 777 seat those older seats but comfortable to seat in it's comfortable to sit in excuse me uh, Wi-Fi worked great really a great value for 10 bucks and the food was phenomenal uh, so really that's how I sum it up the only negative part really about my experience was the where the outlet is on the seat because it's very difficult to first of all find and it's also difficult to plug your <laughs> device in there so that was my experience on Qatar Airways business class on there old non-Q Suites business class on the 777-300-ER. As always, I do appreciate you watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share this with a friend. Thank you.